feeling the pressure during the bidding, particularly when it seemed to stall at around 500,000 guineas? Well, I think you always feel pressure. You're not sure who's going to come in and who's going to bid, so you're always sweating at any stage, knowing how well the horse is going to go. Uh, yes and no. I think I was reasonably relaxed because um, we knew there were one or two people that were keen on the horse. And, uh, sometimes people hold back and don't bid until it gets up to a level. So I was quietly hopeful, or once I was confident, quietly hopeful that, that the horse was going to go okay. He's made a huge price in the ring, but there is a tiny part of you who would have liked to have taken him back home. Yes, uh, I, it, it's, it's quite easy with Colts for me. I, I, the, we've got to try and make the, the stud work, we've got to try and make it financially sensible, and it, it's very easy for my the Colts go. Um, try, yes, we have a uh, maybe bigger decision if you have a really nice filly if you're going to keep them, but on basically the Colts go, so, so they come to the sales and they hopefully pay for it, try and pay for it, you know, whatever else. And can you tell us on how you decide on the matings for attraction? Well, it'd be very simple to say the best of the best and hope for the best, <laughs> which is maybe largely what we've done in the last few years, given the think she'd gone to Galileo, she'd gone to Dubai, she'd gone to Frankel. I think she deserves the best. Um, Frankel was a last year, or however long ago, before was a no-brainer in a way, because he was such an exciting horse. He won the guineas by making all. She won the guineas by making all, so that was, you know, it was a sort of, you had to do it. Dubawi's, you know, been fantastically successful commercially, um, and he's a top-class stallion as well. She's had Galileo before that, so we have, you know, we we she, she is a, she was a top-class mare, and we've given her the best we can possibly hope for.